body's on. It looks like we're on the home run, but there's still plenty to do. Let's see what we're going to do in this section. Okay, so before the body went on, I lined the engine bay with heat reflective sheet. Much easier to put it in nice and neatly and square uh, all around here and down where the cat uh, comes in and the uh, exhaust exit. I also just sprayed the inside there with um, VH, very high temperature VHT uh, paint for fiberglass. Um, so that is painted. I may also line the inside of that with the uh, heat re reflective sheet as well, just to uh, save the fiberglass from really heating up on this side and possibly bubbling the paint on the outside. So that's all done. Uh, the next section is bolting the actual body on. So that's pretty simple. Uh, the kit comes with all the bolts that are required to bolt the body on. Uh, I'm just swapping out a couple of the washers uh, for larger penny washers just to spread the load a little bit more. I find that too much pressure in one spot uh, can crack the uh, fiberglass a little or certainly make some disconcerting noises. So I'm just going to uh, finish that. Uh, there's um, uh, five or six in each side. Uh, some of the holes <coughs> almost, almost lined up, but um, I've just, so they drop straight through. I've just been using this little grinder attachment on my drill, uh, just uh, just to slightly widen uh, a, a, a odd hole so that the bolts drop straight through and can be tightened up. And uh, there's a couple more in the uh, boot here uh, that go straight through and then uh, do up on the outside underneath. So I'm going to get on uh, and do that. So onto the controls here. Uh, as you can see, this is the pedal box. Uh, you definitely need two people. It's um, it's quite awkward and heavy. Uh, you need someone to hold the nuts still from the other side while you uh, push put this into position. You've got a couple of nuts right up in the corners uh, to, to do up. So they're quite awkward. Um, so you just definitely need a helper. So I did these up nearly tight, just so I had a slight bit of movement while I put the brake server on. So the brake server just pokes through. Um, they do mention in the instructions, uh, it's a lot easier to put the brake servo in when the body is off. And that's because it's, it's an extremely awkward shape. As you can see, uh, the brake servo and the um, uh, master cylinder there uh, is quite long and, uh, and awkward. So uh, I did just fit it in place. Uh, I separated the two halves, the, the reservoir there and the servo and then I compressed the servo and held that in with a, a winding of wire around it and then I was able to pass it up through um, through this hole. So that came up through the hole and I managed to mount that into place and then I added the reservoir there onto it uh, very simply. That's just two, two nuts holding that on. Um, so yeah, it's probably a lot easier. It just doesn't, it just doesn't fit uh, fully um, uh, sprung out. It just doesn't fit through this gap in any orientation. Plus you don't want to be scratching anything. Uh, so it was a bit of a pain, but uh, I do remember doing uh, it on my last car and just passing it up through the triangle there with it fully compressed. Um, <clears throat> so that was okay. And there we go, as if by magic, uh, I've plumbed in my pipes. Now I believe the uh, the front uh, the front connection here is for your front brakes and the one here is for your rear brakes. Uh, so I just need to tidy up my P-clips and stuff, keep it all uh, nice and tight against the uh, wheel well there. Um, I fitted my clutch uh, cylinder there and now we're on to the steering column. Let's talk about the donor steering wheel column that you require. You need a BMW E34 airbag or non-airbag version. Let's see what you get. We have quite a comprehensive uh, version here. Uh, everything is well complete. Uh, there's no rust anywhere. If you do have any rust on here, you can easily just uh, wire brush it or drill it off. And you need to make sure you get all the way from uh, this nut, including this nut, all the way from this end, all the way through 
to the steering column here. Obviously this part attaches to the uh, rubber here and you've got decent plastics, uh, particularly the top section because that may be on view in your build. Uh, not so concerned about the bottom section. You need the rest of the steering column here. You do not need this knuckle on the end, um, but you do uh, need this, uh, this extension part of the shaft which will then attach to, um, apart from a AK, another uh, part of the steering column with some knuckles on the end. So this is a complete uh, column here, and we're going to see um, uh, what we can do with disassembling it, because you do not need any part of the ignition. So we can take all, this, all of this out, uh, all this end out, and we also, very important, need to take the steering lock pin out. So let me have a go at all that. First part is pretty easy, undo two grub screws here and you can remove this socket out of the back there and then obviously uh, follow it all back and remove all of the wiring. Now let's see what we need to do to remove the uh, front of the ignition barrel here. So the barrel removal was not my finest hour. There are a lot of videos saying how easy it is to get a straightened bob bobby pin, hair, hair grip uh, with a slight bend at the end and you simply insert it down, uh, you, you, align, you align the um, key to a certain angle uh, and actually the hole that you insert the bobby pin ends up being in line with this seam here and you simply insert it in there, wiggle it about a bit and get some tension on there and then you're able to bend it and, uh, and turn it and what you're doing is turning so uh, a, a bit of metal that resides in this slot here is is levered out and then the whole thing just lifts out really cleanly and literally it should take about 30 seconds a minute just a, just a bit of wiggling and that bit of metal should lever away from that uh, indent and then you can slide the whole barrel out well i've got three uh, e36 uh, steering columns here and i spent a couple of hours going through each of them and i was not successful so in the end, uh, I just drilled it out. So first of all, you can get the center of the barrel out, but just by inserting the key, and then this barrel will come out, uh, out of this section here. And then, um, and then I simply drilled down at an angle, uh, dead easy. It all seems to be very soft metal, aluminium, whatever. Uh, I just drilled down at an angle, and it basically released a bit of metal that resides uh, in this slot. Uh, enough for it to fall out and that was the end of that so <laughs> not not great but um but there you go i've got all three of them out using that method so let's see what we need to do next for this steering lock so to remove the rest of the barrel out of here you simply have to whack this section with a hammer uh, and then you might have to just tap it through with a, um, a screwdriver and hammer and it comes out really easy so i'll just clear that out of the way The next bit to do is to take out the steering lock itself. Now this is a, a quite a hunk of, uh, of brass in there. Um, now there is an easy way just to disable it, but I'm gonna remove it totally because I don't want that accidentally engaging or jumping into place if you to drive over a bump or, or something. I'm not sure if it actually would, but uh, I'm just gonna take it all out. Now to remove, just to disable it, uh, there's basically a spring uh, just under under this plate here, and you can get to it simply by drilling in in the middle, uh, right about here, and you do about a, about an M8, I think, in the end, and you can just fish out a, a little spring in there, and um, and that will basically disable it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that whole plate off, and I'm going to take out this this whole steering lock. So let's get on with that. So like I said, there may be an easier way to do this. I'm not aware of it after watching a lot of videos. Uh, I want it all removed. Uh, I've just done it on two previous steering columns and it was pretty simple. It looks pretty major. It's all soft metal though. It's all done within about uh, 45 seconds to a minute, hopefully. I'm gonna show you in real time. Uh, remember, safety goggles, etc. cetera. Uh, let's just crack on.
Okay, so there's the offending spring. Like I said, it is about uh, about in the middle. You can just drill a hole, pop that spring out, and it'll stop pushing this plate down. So that's how to do that bit, but I'm gonna remove the whole lot. Okay, just get this bit out of the way there. There we go. And let's see if I can just uh, poke this up. So there you can see plates and basically you should just be able to lever this out now um, but I might just need to finesse that and keep it square by poking something up in this hole so let me just sort that out okay so we just needed to make that a little bit squarer and out it comes and you can see here uh, that it's a hell of a chunk of, uh, of brass there I certainly want, wouldn't want that engaging uh, into the slot uh, in the steering column. So uh, I think it is best just to remove it straight out. But it might have been enough just to take the spring off and to stop it being pushed into the steering column. So there we go, it's all, uh, it's all done there. I'm just going to just uh, breeze these edges off with a, with a, a thin file. Um, I only took that little section off. It's gonna be covered by the bottom plastics anyway. I didn't want to uh, take any more off. This square here is used um, to keep the bottom plastics in. A pin goes through there, plastic uh, pin if you like. Um, so that's used for attaching the bottom plastics. Uh, so really just a neat square there. No one's ever gonna see it. We're safe in the knowledge, nothing's going to engage. And uh, that is the steering column. So to fit the steering column, uh, you need to trim the this side of uh, the black bracket and you also need to take off um, a bit of this uh, the, the arm on this side as you can see that's what it would that's what it would look like on the other side and you have to just cut that shorter and uh, tidy it up um, so then that will turn over and then these two uh, these two holes here and here and then this one remaining leg here will fit up uh, onto, onto here, and then that leg will fit um, through this hole up here. So let's have a look what that looks like. Okay, so we've just got a temporary fit up here just to uh, show you what the score is. Uh, now, you don't actually have a lot of adjustment here at all. Um, the bolt at the back uh, goes in through the slot uh, on the chassis here um, and it's only a slot about an uh, inch and a half long or so uh, which you think might give you a lot of lot of movement but in actual fact you pretty much want the uh, steering wheel uh, steering column pulled up forward as much as possible and that's to give you the clearance for your uh, controls here now obviously with the big uh, BMW uh, controls on here uh, they're going to be hitting but uh, the idea is that you remove those big plastic plastic chunky things and you put on a, a nice uh, nice alloy uh, end here and then you have plenty of uh, room and uh, nothing nothing hits etc so so really you don't have any adjustment you just have a modicum of, uh, of left and right um, to straighten up uh, now I've got the wrong steering boss here but uh, I'm pretty pleased that when this is when this is lined up, uh, actually this uh, this intersects uh, almost the same point on either side of uh, e on both doors. Um, so in actual fact, the steering wheel is going to be nice and straight. So that's that's all you can do really. Um, and as long as you're uh, as long as you've adjusted it so that uh, that uh, the steering column isn't going to um, hit anything when, when it turns, when you've got uh, the rest of the column inserted all the way through to the uh, hole right at the back, then uh, you, should be, you should be good to go. So I'm gonna finish fitting this up and see what it all looks like. All right, so we've been having quite a good time so far. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop fitting the steering column for now because I haven't got the steering column uh, supporting bush. As you can see from this picture, it does say it is a required part, 
um, but it's not actually included in the kit. Uh, uh, so make sure that when you're going through the ordering process, you do order it. Uh, you can even see here that it says in the instructions that the steering column is uh, supported using the AK column bush. So uh, I think really it should be uh, it should be included and not an extra. But never mind, that's on its way. Uh, so no real worries. There's plenty uh, of other things to do. So I'm just going to show you what I've been up to and uh, what we're going to be doing next. So first up, we got my heater box. I just put some rift nuts into the uh, fiberglass body there and uh, put the bolts through, uh, four bolts on each side. Nice and solid, that's all happening. And as you can see uh, on this side, I've only just temporarily uh, connected these pipes. Uh, so that's all looking really nice there. Uh, I'm just gonna make a little bracket coming off one of the multitude of uh, 10 mil threaded bolts in the head here. Uh, I'm just gonna make a little bracket just to hold these pipes, stop them flopping around. Um, but they're coming up really nicely, not hitting anything. And uh, that's a really nice solution there, I think. Uh, so all I need to do is fit my little our flanges on here and go straight out uh, straight out into the into the bodywork there and that will be cool um, fuel pipes I've cut this uh, this return pipe to length up to the fuel pressure re regulator I'm going to go straight across to the other side and um, you can see here that uh, I've cut my uh, fuel pipe to length I'm just going to then take this uh, outlet up there uh, across the top of the bulkhead uh, to the fuel pressure regulator and this uh, this section will just have one um, probably p-clip in here and then I've got uh, the special end on here which is kind of a, a quick release kind of end for the fuel rail so that's uh, nice and simple and clean I think uh, going in there so that's all good I just swapped out a couple of uh, black hoses that I wasn't happy with uh, for, the, for more fuel uh, braided hose. Um, I think this is something to do with the air, obviously, uh, coming out of the top of the head here. And uh, I just thought that brightened up a bit. I wasn't too happy with the rubber hose that I'd got. It was kinking far too easily. Uh, it needed a thicker one, but why not use what you've got? Uh, so that's all good. Um, I've put a VHT, very high temperature paint on my manifolds here uh, so they are all ready for fitting they come up really nicely so that's good um, steering column obviously just ready for fitting everything is uh, all lined up and a-okay just need the brush to put in there I'll show you that later with then the steering column extension down to the, uh, the steering rack so that's really nice so all looking good so far uh, going together really well nearly like Lego couple of little modifications but uh, that's the kit car for you so all uh, very happy and I think uh, even though there's plenty of uh, other bodywork type of things left to do uh, there's no real specified order to do anything in and I'm quite eager to get the wiring in and maybe uh, do that first engine start in a few weeks so um, we'll do the wiring next I think and see you again